that's why I'm saying 815, whatever. Yeah, no problem. All right. Okay, folks, uh, it's 7 o'clock. This is the uh, Wilfboro Planning Board meeting, May 7th, 2019. Uh, my name is Kathy Barnard. I'm the chairman of the planning board. Let me introduce the, the other members. Uh, down at the end of the table to the left, uh, Matt Sullivan, our uh, director of planning and development. And right next to me, uh, to my left, uh, Von Dugan, vice chairman of the planning board. Uh, to my right, Mike Cotter, uh, John Thurston, and uh, Peter Goodwin. Uh, we have a couple members that uh, are not here uh, this evening, but we do have a, a quorum. And so we will proceed. Uh, the uh, first item on the agenda is a continuance from our last meeting of April 16th. Uh, it's for Sky Ridge Farm, and there are actually two applications, but we need to uh, deal with uh, the, the first application, which I will read into the record, and uh, once we complete that one, uh, then we'll determine if we go on with the second application. So uh, this uh, continued application is Sky Ridge Farm Condominium Association. This is for a special use permit, and the public hearing was continued from uh, April 16th. This is for tax map 188-63, case 2019-07. Uh, the property is, is located at 2 Farmhouse Lane on North Main Street, the old Melanson uh, property. Uh, the reason that the application was continued at our last meeting was that um, planning board members wanted to visit the site, and so we need to properly notice a uh, site visit, uh, which we did, and that took place at 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, minutes were taken, and it's my understanding that uh, Von Dugan was present, John Thurston, and Peter Goodwin, as, as well as the uh, applicant. Is, is that, did I get that correct, folks? Okay. Okay, so um, why, why don't we continue, and I, I guess probably we want to hear from the planning board members and their uh, observations at the, the site this evening. And, and just a reminder that you have accepted the application is complete, so then the public hearing yep. open, so you've, yep. you're, Welcome to comment on it now. Yes, right. Yep. Right. So, uh, somebody want to call, and then uh, uh, Mr. Coons is the uh, applicant's representative, so you'll probably be asked uh, some questions, Dan. Okay. Uh, did uh, any of the planning well, board members? So, uh, we visited the site and we were shown the footprint of the proposed garage in question, not the other garage that seems to have no issues. Okay. Um, and we were, the, the side setback in the wetlands area were pointed out, and then we uh, looked around that area and looked at the walkway and looked at some of the trees that were discussed. Um, and I. My opinion, I don't, I, we haven't actually discussed this before, is that, you know, the alternate locations are, are still a possibility. Um, and I, I'm very concerned about the, you know, the, there was a handicap issue raised at the last meeting. Um, that, the walkway that is currently there is, it's not only sort of falling apart, the timbers are, and John can speak to this, um, but it's definitely not handicap accessible. So that, as a rationale, is hard for me to understand. Um, if you really want to help somebody handicapped out, you have to provide not just a garage that's close to their door, but actually a pathway for them to get in. Um, so that, that's one issue. And the other issue is some of the trees that were mentioned <coughs> as being somewhat precious are actually dying or dead. Uh, so I think that there is a possibility that it could be moved over or relocated. Um, that's my opinion. Okay. Thank you. 
Yep, thank you, Vaughn. Um, uh, the, the, the steps leading to the subject's residence that she says are vital to her getting to the garage, <clears throat> all, the, all the railroad ties are tipped ahead and they're all like slanting downhill. So if anybody was to step on them, they would slip right off. So every one of them, is at least eight of them that were just like that. Uh, so I would agree with Vaughn that that doesn't hold very much water and, and uh, the, the idea that the trees that are the 20 inch maple and the one behind it, which was the 18 inch maple, uh, the 18 inch maple is all broken apart and the 20 inch maple has got a big rotted dead hole right in it. And, and to be honest, uh, I would see that area to be an, a nice option to move the building back over 15 feet and uh, you would reduce the amount of area that uh, is in the wetland setback. Uh, it was, it was, a question was asked at the, at the site visit and uh, the question was what difference would it make whether or not the building was where it is proposed or it was changed and I made a observation that where it's proposed, the back corner is five feet away from standing water. And if that building was moved away, it would be 15 feet away from standing water. So to me, that was one reason why I didn't feel that that was the least impacted area where it's proposed, and I would propose moving it over as less impact. Thank you. Peter, did you want to make any comments? <clears throat> well, one of the things that I was thinking of is that this is a, uh, the desire is to construct something which is literally right at the edge of a wetland. And it then is an issue that if this one is allowed, other ones could be allowed too. And uh, so to me, that becomes an issue of later enforcement, later um, issues that <clears throat> would arise. And so if it ends up being moved to a point where it is less impacting, it is going to be, uh, I think, a much better approach. Yeah, I had uh, visited the site uh, back, of, well, before the last pub public hearing, and it, it seemed to me that uh, there was room to, uh, facing, standing in the driveway, facing North Main Street, move it um, further to, to the left and, and uh, reduce the impact in the wetland area. So uh, that's one of the uh, specific things that Planning Board needs to consider when we're uh, looking at special use permits. Uh, Mike, did you I, I'm not sure if you got to the site or... No, I did not go to the site visit, so I can't speak to the site specifically. Oh, okay. But um, what concerns me in this application is the, um, <clears throat> the stated handicap status of the applicant and um, the rigidity of um, 17510C um, in his requirements for an alternate location. There's a clash there. If, if the applicant has a, s a handicap, which is, which reduces her ability to get in and out of her, her home safely, and the siting of the garage as proposed would remedy that to an extent, then it would seem to me that this board could offer the applicant a reasonable accommodation and allow, in this particular case, under our understanding of ADA requirements and allowances, what would be in the case of a ZBA variance, an exception based upon handicap status. We have nothing in our ordinances that allow for reasonable accommodations. We're not required to under ADA either. But it is suggested by the feds, by the federal government, that local authorities make good faith efforts
to work with persons who have handicap status when they come up against an ordinance which is inflexible according to their needs. And my concern is in this case that we don't lose sight of the fact that the siting of the, of the garage, although it violates, it appears to at any rate, because there are alternate locations to be proposed on the ground, and you've heard that from the board members following their site visit. Although it seems to violate the requirements of 17510C, nonetheless, if the handicap status is established, this board has the opportunity to allow for a reasonable accommodation. It would not, in my opinion, uh, incur future difficulties with enforcement because the allowance is made specifically for a reasonable accommodation under an understanding of ADA requirements. No other applicant could come here and say, I want an, app an exception as well without being able to establish handicap status and an absolute need for such an accommodation. You see my point. Um, I'd like to hear more about, and I don't mean to pry, and it's none of my business, and it's not any of this board's business either, but if the case has been made that the garage by the applicant's agent needs to be cited where it's cited because of the status of the applicant, I'd like to hear that established, and if that were the case, I think that should carry weight with this board. Can I, can I just yeah. ask Mike a question? So sure. <clears throat> if a handicapped person can't reasonably get to the garage down a very non-compliant uh, step system, that, that kind of kills the argument that, you know, we're making exceptions based on handicaps. Well, it, it <clears throat> I would disagree respectfully that it wouldn't kill the argument. The case would still remain that an accommodation could be made. It's really up to the, and the accommodation is only to be made to allow the applicant, in this case the handicapped applicant, access to the garage. If between the house and the garage there is an obstacle course to be dealt with, it's really on the applicant to work out. It's not on the board. I don't think the board has to concern itself with whether or not there's a perfectly smooth surface between point A and point B. The board has only to concern itself with whether allowing a building in point B, which violates an ordinance, is acceptable as a reasonable accommodation given the handicap status of the applicant. I, I, I want to interject here. The question was asked whether or not the, the basis for the application was based on ADA access and I don't believe it was. No, it wasn't definitely not because we have no allowance in our zoning ordinances as, a, as applied by this board for any allowance under handicap. On, when they went before the ZBA for their variance, they did not plead the handicap exemption. Well, they uh, pled a very regular variance case and they were granted their variance. I'm not. Had they pled that case, I suspect they might have had an easier time of it. Well, if, uh, if uh, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you or say that your view is different than anybody else's, but I was up there, I did a site walk, I didn't feel that one place uh, moving over 15 feet was a, uh, was a hardship uh, to, to allow this building to be pulled out of the wetland. With all respect, I couldn't agree with you because I'm not the person dealing with the reduced ability. Okay, well, the, some of the information that just just uh, and that was presented to us by the by the applicant uh, for this case was um, uh, information. It says if the ZBA does not approve. Uh, the variance, the only alternative would be to move this set of garages 20 feet further along the barn driveway. So it uh, sounded to me like there was some thought to do that. And that also, when I, I was out there, I thought, well, you know, there's a, a solution that has been submitted in the application. So mm -hmm. it sort of um, put us in a bad situation. 
you know, situation that we're looking at um, information from the applicant, so saying okay. that it could be moved. Uh, go ahead, P Peter, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I just <clears throat> uh, looked at the distances involved and coming from the door to the proposed site of the, um, uh, the garage is a given distance and moving at 15 feet uh, to the, uh, what, northwest along the driveway adds about 25% uh, to that distance. And so it is not a huge change in the total distance which you have to get to. Not only that, uh, it is on the flat as compared to coming downstairs or coming down from the house to the driveway. Right, Matt, Matt did, did you want to add anything or? Uh no, I mean, I think it, at this time, it's probably best to have the applicant yes, address yes, these okay. issues. But yeah, I, I have nothing to, to add. I mean, I think that Mike has hit the, head, the nail on the head with the ZBA's relationship to accessibility versus the planning boards. And mm -hmm. I think that um, he, he's correct in his analysis. So I have nothing to add. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Coons, Dan, did you, did you want to uh, yeah, comment? <coughs> Vaughn, to comment on your issue of the trees, um, you probably noticed that there was new growth on both of those two trees. They have fresh buds and leaves coming out on both of those. So, yeah. they're not dead. They're I'm not dead yet, as Monty yeah. Python would say. Okay. Um, as far as impacts on the wetland by placement of the garage where it is, uh, this is a three acre lot which comes out to approximately 130, 135,000 square feet. So 525 square feet for the garage would be about half a percent of increased impervious. If I'm not mistaken, it might even be less than that. Brandon, do you have that in your head? 525 by into 135,000? <laughs> it might be half of a thousandth of a percent. Or anyway, it's minuscule. It won't have any effect on wetland functions and values. Um, the plan for the applicant is to rebuild the steps this summer, whether it's to a ramp or a set of stairs, but as close to ADA compliance as they can make them. Um, and I would like to reinforce that the ZBA did decide to allow a variance based largely upon mobility issues of the applicant or one of the unit owners. So I know you have been sitting here deciding whether you can speak for Jan and her problems getting around or not, but the ZBA did decide to make an allowance for her mobility issues um, and on top of that it is a visual issue of where you're placing the garages and sticking them right in front of the windows on the building obstructing the view of the woods in front so have you considered moving it to the left whether it's 10 feet or 15 feet have you considered that at all could you I, I think you talked about that at the last meeting but uh, the applicant has decided that's not acceptable, so. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, not acceptable to move it at all, or 15 feet, or 10, or just, no? I'll let them speak okay. to that. Matter. Okay, all right. Thank you. I'm uh, Robert Gillette, uh, a member of the uh, board of the condo association, Sky Ridge Farm, and one of the owners seeking to build uh, garages. And these two units, one of them would be ours. Uh, we appreciate your thoughtful consideration of, of all the issues involved here. Um, adding 15 feet of distance is 15 feet of glare ice in winter. Now, no, it's trivial. Not so trivial in winter. Okay, well, I did say 10, 15, so it... Um, I don't know about 10. We haven't thought 10. We'd have to try to figure out what this would look like. 
but it would, at 15 feet or more, uh, begin to block views from the windows because it's a fairly, we're looking at the end of the uh, fairly high uh, peaked roof, and I don't know that reducing the pitch of the roof is really an option either because of the snowfall. Um, so uh, it is fairly low grade wetland. Uh, as Dan said, it does occupy or would occupy a very small percentage of the drained area. Um, and uh, we really don't feel that there's an alternative to that, that location. When we rebuild the, the steps or ramp, however it's going to work, probably both going up to uh, our neighbor's uh, entrance, whether it comes down to the same entry point onto the uh, driveway or not, we can't say at this point. Uh, so it might move it a little further, which would even extend her walking distance. Depends on what, uh, when we ask a qualified builder for a design, what they will recommend. So um, these are our, our issues too. I appreciate your consideration. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, other comments? Uh, if not, I would entertain a motion on the uh, special use permit. The application has been, been found to be complete already? Yeah, yes, it's been com uh, Sorry, complete. I was not here, was and it, right, and <clears throat> it did open a uh, public hearing. Well, the public hearing is open. Did anyone else want to comment? Oh, okay. Okay, so would you folks like to proceed? I would like to address the gentleman who just spoke, uh, the, the owner there, very, very nice gentleman. His wife is very pleasant also. I have no uh, bad feelings or disregard for anybody over there and, and, and especially the person who needs handicap access. If the case is that the uh, walkway may be redirected, it could be even brought closer. And uh, that's my feeling. I, I, I really I have nothing against these people. I, 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 have, I have the problem with the plan. And uh, I I feel the same as Peter said. If we allow this to happen, the people, more people come in, they, they push the envelope, it's right on top of the water, it's right on top of the line, there's, there's least impact area, and we're not doing our job if we're not looking out for all the other areas that don't have a voice. Because the people that have the voice, they explained what their position is, and, the, and I respect that. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to deny this application unless these people are willing to at least move it over 10 feet. Okay, I'll, I'll second the motion uh, because I, I think clearly there are some al alternate locations and uh, I, I've asked the applicant uh, two or three times if they would consider moving it and I didn't put a specific distance in. and. Um, uh, at least in my mind, if uh, we could have gotten it out of the, uh, further out of the wetland area, I would have been more comfortable. So I'll second the motion. Uh, any other comments? Yeah, Madam Chairman, if I may. Okay. Um, I brought to the board's attention the idea of a reasonable accommodation under ADA. Um, um, <clears throat> I thought that was an issue that the board needed to be aware of. I think it's a, an issue that the board needs to consider for the future, perhaps put on the work session for the future. The legislature f saw fit to allow ZBA an additional reason for granting a variance to accommodate a handicapped access person. Um, they have not seen fit to do that with our board, but we are at liberty to allow for such an accommodation should we want to, but that's an issue that needs legal advice as well as our deliberation. That said, um, <clears throat> we're looking at a special use permit for impact on, on the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Understood, and I'm just, I'm, 
I finished my preamble, okay. if All I right. may make my, my point. Okay. What I did not hear from the applicant tonight or the two times before that the application was presented here that I was present was any strong argument for ADA access being necessary for the siting of the garage. Um, that I find disappointing. I'm going to abstain on this vote. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, okay. I, I have an additional comment. Okay. If, in fact, it, it were moved over 10 feet, it would still require the ZBA um, exception that was granted. It, it won't be five feet from the lot line. It will be 15. It's still in violation. So the ZBA will have been, you know, recognized that there was some relief given. I think we would be recognized for giving some relief. Um, we don't have a design of the new walkway, so we don't know where it ends up. It could be directed toward the garage, slightly shifted over. Um, that's an unknown. It's a choice. So I'd have to say I'm not in favor of granting an allowance for ADA access because, for one, it hasn't been presented that way. For two, we don't have an ADA ramp here at all. Um, and I have nurtured a number of trees, you know, beyond their useful life and tried to get them to live. But, you know, those trees are not going to be there for very long. So that, that's, that's, a, that's questionable. Okay, thank you. Um, I would also suggest that um, if the garage is moved the 10 or 15 feet along the driveway, that ends up being closer to the other steps, the other entrance to the other unit. And we know that uh, times change and other people may have the same kind of, of access issues. And so therefore, it may end up being 10 years, 15 years, a new, new owner. Those are the people who, are, uh, who need extra assistance. And so therefore, it is, you know, it is, to me, the idea that this is being granted for something which is important, but it's not necessarily going to be something which is, uh, in actuality, 30 or 40 years from now. And so this, this ends up being something which goes with the property forever, and it uh, impacts the way that our zoning regulations are being applied. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I'll call the question then. Uh, all in uh, support of the motion to not grant uh, the special use permit for the garage, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Not in support. And uh, opposed? Uh, abstentions? Okay, and I, I voted uh, for the motion. Uh, okay, okay, so we can continue now with the uh, site plan review, which I will read into the record. Uh, this is Sky Ridge Farm Condominium Association, a continued public hearing from April 16th, 2019 for site plan review for the construction and the um, item says for two garages, but this will be uh, for one garage. Uh, tax map 188-63, case 2019-08. And so this will be for the one garage which is on the entry road. Uh, we uh, open... Uh, I, I think you need to be very careful here. Uh, the, uh, the application in front of you is for two garages. And I, I have some concern that it, it, with the denial that was just issued that it's difficult to separate the two as part of this application that has been noticed to the abutters. And I, I'm not trying to be a procedural difficulty, but we have, you know, we've noticed the application a certain way. It's been presented a certain way. I believe it needs to be amended formally if the board's going to proceed with it. I, I would be uncomfortable with a condition on any kind of approval that says only this garage and not that garage is approved. And I, again, I hate to be difficult, okay, but I well, think it's... Okay, it's clear that we are not approving the... Um, right. And I think because of the scope of the site plan involved both garages, it's a, a, an issue. It's been noticed as such, and that's 
no longer the reality of the application. Okay, can the, I, uh, can the applicant amend the application at this time? I would recommend against that, but if the board is comfortable with that amendment. Oh, okay, well, I'm Yeah, no, yeah, and I, I think that it's, I don't think it's a procedural issue, but I, it's all the board's comfort level with accepting an amendment at this time. Um, and whether you feel that is a significant enough amendment that it makes the case notification and the materials in the application null and void. Okay, we, we had uh, accepted the application as complete last time, opened the public hearing, right. and so then what would you suggest, that we uh, continue this for uh, an amended? I, I don't feel that you can continue the application because, again, it's, it's been <coughs> continuance would not require new notice to the abutters or changing okay. of the case. So I, I really, unfortunately, think the only way to proceed is to, and the, the applicant has time, but submit an amended plan for the June meeting. I think that is the best way to proceed for the one garage if they wish to do so. But I don't feel that you have the option to amend it to include one of the garages only. Matt, at that time, it would be possible for them to bring back the new position of this other garage? In their if they application. decide in the next uh, couple days before the application deadline, they certainly could amend the special use permit and the site plan review if they choose to move the garage 10, 15, well, whatever they so that choose. Would be a new special use permit. Yep, it would be and both a new would site. would not be able to accommodate them in June. That's correct. They would not meet the June. Sorry, that's one one day off. They would not meet the special use permit deadline, but would meet the site plan review if they choose to remove one of the garages. Right, but yes, it, that, I mean that is an option. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable unbundling these two applications and having okay. the second one <clears throat> as if the first one had not already been denied. I think it's really up to the applicant now to come back to us with an amended application for a site plan review. Oh, okay, well, uh, but the application, I hate to prolong this, but the application is before us. What do we now need to do? I, I would recommend that you deny without prejudice so the applicant could okay. return. All right, uh, okay. Yeah. And the public hearing is open, should I? Uh, I think that the application, the applicant may wish to respond yeah. to the position, okay. but okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I did read it into the record. The public hearing is is open. Um, you, you've heard, uh, Dan, uh, the situation that we're in, and would you like to make some comments, or, or the applicant? <coughs> Again, thank you for your uh, careful consideration. Um, I would have to take this issue back to our other owners to ask what they would like to do now. Uh, what would be the deadline for submitting an amended application if so we were to do the, so? Yeah, the, the special use, uh, sorry, the site plan application deadline would be next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Um, but again, as the board is sort of noting, that would be for if you want to proceed with one garage only. If you want to proceed with both garages. Uh, and we, move 10 feet, for example. If you, yes. Yeah, exactly. If you want to proceed with both, then you would need to uh, submit both a site plan review and a special use permit, and that would need to be done really for the July meeting, which would be a June a June deadline, and we can communicate exactly when that is. So it's either Tuesday or July or June. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. All right. Oh, okay. Do you want to make any more comments, or are you all set? Oh, okay. And uh, then I'll, I'll make a motion uh, to deny the site plan review for Sky Ridge Farm Condominium Association um, based on uh, the noticing requirements where this application is for two garages uh, and we only can consider one. Is that without prejudice? And uh, deny without prejudice, yes. Okay. Seconded. Okay, motion has been made and, and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, folks, for your, your patience and participation. Uh, okay, the um, next application, uh, Edward Morgan the third and Thank Diane you. Morgan. And uh, it says... Justin Morgan. If you could share your agenda. Yes.
I gave my there, there, Justin no. Martin. Yeah, Justin informed me today that there's an error in his yes, name. Right, right. He uh, wishes to file. Yeah, he, he wishes to file a complaint, I believe. So, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Justin, for that. Okay, Edward Morgan, just, Diane Morgan, and uh, uh, Justin Martin. And, and the board has no issue with me participating in this because I do work with Justin, obviously. Okay. Just, I don't want to make that clear. Obviously, I don't feel, feel it's a conflict of interest, but I don't like him anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So. <laughs> oh, okay. This is all <laughs> right. Right. Uh, this is a boundary line adjustment uh, at 18 King Street, X Map 203-37 and 38 Case 2019-10. Okay. Good evening, Randy Tatro, Norway Plains, for the applicants. And you have some waivers uh, also that you're requesting. I guess uh, the Justin part was overlooked. Uh, we came before the board uh, almost a year ago today um, to do a, con uh, a preliminary discussion on this application. And it's taken this long for the, um, <clears throat> the applicants to do a purchase and sale and get everything signed and so forth. The reason coming before, to come before the board was twofold. One was because it was a reconfiguration of nonconforming lots, and that can be subjective, as you know, for the criteria of that section. Uh, the second reason was because we wanted to be able to uh, get the board's feeling on requesting a waiver for full site features for the remaining property. And that discussion took place at that meeting uh, before, they, uh, before the applicants decided to pay to proceed to do the surveying and so forth. Um, so the parcel is located um, on King Street, uh, lot 20338. Uh, Justin Martin is a small lot with 168 foot of frontage on King Street. It's about a 10,500 square foot lot. The, the lot in the rear that's owned by the Morgans is a uh, landlocked parcel. They also own an adjacent, an adjacent parcel that goes out to uh, Filterbed Road. Um, that lot is around just over two acres in size. This area is serviced by municipal water and sewer, so although it's the residential zone with two utilities, I think we had this discussion before yep. Yep. that it, uh, the lot size can be reduced from an acre to a half acre. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Yep. And so this proposal <coughs> brings the uh, Martin lot into conformity acreage-wise and already had frontage. The remaining lot would still be conforming acreage-wise but non-conforming frontage-wise. Um, that said, um, the proposal is again to add 14,719 square feet from the, out of the larger lot to the smaller lot, uh, making the smaller lot just over a half acre in size. Frontage will remain the same. Again, it's town water and sewer. The lot on King Street is developed with the house, uh, and the remaining lot is not. There was a question raised by the uh, there was a question raised by the plan of review regarding the flood zone. Um, and I, uh, I prepared a, a plan for that that you guys could look at. So basically, the flood zone is a small portion of the lot in the rear that is in the A flood zone, which is on elevation based, but it is. Um, out behind there next to the uh, uh, next to the brook that runs in the back. This is the area out back by the 
questions, folks? Nope. For me. That was uh, mentioned in the plan of review that I caught. And again, the minutes of the meeting on May 8th, 2018, we discussed um, the reason for the adding of the lot, which is basically to give the house lot a little backyard, at least some room around the house. Um, they went, uh, the, the two owners negotiated out the size that they wanted to give them, which is a little bit smaller than what I brought to you guys the first time. I think it was like 0.6 acres the first time. So now it's, it's, it's down about 10,000 square feet, but that's what they agreed on. That's what we're showing. Uh, most of the lot is already monumented. All we'll need to do is set one new corner should it get approved. And um, I don't know if we should have a discussion regarding the setbacks. The setbacks listed on my plan are the residential zone setbacks, which are normally a little bit larger because it's more one acre lot size, and given the situation with the BC component, um, the board in in reconfiguration of non-conforming lots can can determine if they want to see the setbacks differently than what we're proposing. So, with that, I'll answer any questions. Do you want me to address that? Yeah, yes, and then yeah. you need to address the waiver. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the, this is again an oddity within our zoning where the utility-based zoning that we employ here, uh, under that zoning, this is a lot within the village residential zone, despite the fact that it's been shown on the residential zone in past zoning mapping. Uh, it clearly has access to water and sewer, uh, and therefore I think the, the board does have the flexibility under the reconfig reconfiguration of non-conforming lots provision to set different setbacks. I don't know if the board has ever taken advantage of that. I would not recommend it here. I would recommend that you stick to the traditional zoning, which would be the, the VR zoning. Um, but I think that... And not the ones that you've mentioned. Is that what you're saying? Not the... I would... I would the, the zoning, underlying zoning is village residential. I would recommend that you leave the underlying zoning what it is. I would recommend that you don't set specific setbacks as part of any motion this evening. Um, although you do have that ability under this portion of the ordinance. Uh, just to kind of get to the fundamental issue here, we had gone back and forth a bit about the reconfiguration of non-conforming lots and whether we were increasing the conformity of this back landlocked lot. My opinion is that the non-conformity of that lot is the road frontage and that this adjustment does not exacerbate that non-conformity in any way. Uh, it also does not bring that lot to a place where it does not conform to the minimum lot size of the underlying zoning. So I. I feel this is a totally appropriate proposal. Um, I would just note that you know the, the standard is pretty clear under Section C that I've cited here. You need to make a finding that the adjustment sort of results in an appropriate planning situation, which I think in this case it does. And subject to the waiver requests, the three that are in front of you, I have no additional comments. Yeah. I, I'm just concerned about the, the setbacks in your planner Review. Yeah, the, the setbacks in my planner review are incorrect. They should be shown as VR setbacks. I apologize for that oh, error. No, yeah. okay. Uh, Matt, any future construction would be would have to follow normal setback rules. Is that right? On the Martin lot, any construction would have to to meet the setbacks. And as far as the Morgan lot, that lot, uh, because it has no access for building construction at this time, at least. Uh, Construction really isn't a viable option there, but it would, of course, be subject to whatever setbacks exist once it connects to utilities. Okay. Thank, thank you. Okay, if you could just comment on the waivers. Yep, the, the, uh, the waiver that was requested um, was for varying sections 174, 7, B, D, and A, which is um, a full survey of the remaining property, which there is a reference plan where that's already been surveyed. There's a reason for that. Uh, requiring the site features, wetlands and topo. We kind of got the wetlands already as if I showed you. Um, again, this lot is um, serviced by town water and sewer. come up with permitted viable access from either filter bed road or otherwise. Um, so 
there really was no reason for, on this application, as we weren't proposing any development on the rear, to you know, do full topos, wetlands, and soils. So those were the waivers that we asked for, and those were the ones we discussed a year ago with the board to at least get an opinion on that. So that's what we requested in writing. Okay, and these uh, waivers don't have any impact whatsoever on the application? Yeah, not in this case, they don't. Okay. Uh, I entertain a motion for the granting of the three, three waivers uh, based on the testimony we just heard. So moved. Seconded. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, with the um, uh, granting, did, did anybody have any questions thus far? Okay. Uh, with the granting of the waivers, the application is considered complete. So, um, thank you. Motion seconded. Is seconded. And seconded to accept this application as complete. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So I'm going to open the public hearing. If anyone is here that wants to comment on, on this application, now is your opportunity to do that. Everyone okay? Okay. Then uh, planning board uh, members, you have any questions? Okay. Uh, Matt, do you have some conditions for us to consider? I do have some conditions to recommend. Conditions one through five, condition one being the incorporation of the boundary line adjustment plan as presented and as amended to the day of this approval for uh, Justin Martin and Edward and Diane Morgan. Uh, the second condition being the submission of the Mylar plan for the Carroll County Registry of Deeds uh, and the uh, payment of all recording fees applicable to that. Condition three, the applicant shall be responsible for monumentation, the submission of a certificate of monumentation uh, to our office and updated plans should any updates be necessary. All the documentation submitted in the application package is obviously incorporated as part of the approval. And then condition five, um, final boundary line adjustment plan shall be submitted with an original stamp and date and signature from a licensed land surveyor. Um, and all granted waivers shall be added as plan notes. This is going to be a procedural change that I'll be implementing. Any waivers that we grant, I'm going to have them added to the plan set. Oh, okay. okay. Well, okay. That's good. And uh, so basically uh, what we've looked at is the reconfiguration of a non-conforming uh, lot and the reconfiguration makes this lot, uh, the smaller lot, more conforming. Uh, therefore, we have justification in the zoning ordinance to grant the, um, uh, this application. So We need to also make a formal finding, do we not? <clears throat> I, I think it's probably best well, that you do, for the record. Since the uh, ordinance suggests that we ought to? Yep. Okay. Yep. So if, if, could the planner suggest some wording to that effect, or should we just simply take it directly from the ordinance? I would take it directly from the ordinance. If you feel that this, this provision has been met, uh, that, you know, provided that the adjustment results in the same or fewer number of lots or to increase the total area or frontage of a non-conforming lot by joining land from a contiguous conforming lot. In this case, it's not a contiguous conforming lot. They're both non-conforming lots. Um, and so I think that you... I, in my opinion, I recommend that it does meet that provision of the zoning ordinance. And it makes this lot become more conforming, a smaller lot. That's correct. I, yep. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't fully bring any of the lots into full, into full conformity, but it does increase the conformity of one right. of the lots. The suggested finding language is in the last four sentences of the italicized paragraph number three. <clears throat> Should we not follow that language? I do not believe you should follow that language because that language pertains to the setting of setbacks. And did we not have a discussion regarding the setbacks and we agreed that we were going to assume the setbacks as discussed earlier? That's, I understand your opinion, but I, the way I read this section of the ordinance is that you shall have the authority, but you don't have to invoke that authority to set the setbacks, an alternative setback here. So I, I don't need you, I don't believe you need to address that provision. We can pass three. over on this. I believe so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve this application with so the moved. conditions. Uh, thank you. Motion has been made and uh, seconded. seconded. Uh, all in. Randy, were you going to? No. I'm just. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, all in favor. Right all in favor. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Oh, okay. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next application is uh, T-Mobile Northeast LLC. This is a public hearing, a site plan review for some antennas and a service cabinet at 16 McManus uh, on the existing water tower, town-owned water tower. Uh, this is tax map 244-63TR, case 201911. Uh, the applicant um, does need a, a variance. Uh, the applicant uh, was present at ZBA where there was no quorum, was that the? I, I will, yeah, so I'll address that quickly. The, the ZBA had a scheduled variance hearing for three, three variances uh, last evening. The ZBA was unable to achieve quorum due to some uh, unforeseen scheduling conflicts. They have scheduled a special meeting for both applications that were considered last night due to the circumstances to uh, May 20th which will be the third Monday, or uh, I'm not sure if it's the third Monday, but May 20th at 7 p.m. Uh, typically, the planning board does not see these sorts of cases until the ZBA action has occurred. <laughs> With that said, it's fully appropriate for you to uh, consider an approval. And should we move in that direction this evening, I will be recommending a condition associated with uh, incorporating any approval by the ZBA and uh, also recognizing that any modification to the plan would trigger further planning board review. Uh, but please just note that, that ZBA, those ZBA variances have not been granted as of this moment. Okay. Uh, actually, and just one other item as well. Uh, I should be clear about the scope of the planning board's review tonight. Uh, clearly, the notice language includes both the antenna and cabinet work. Uh, however, uh, RSA 12K in the state statute uh, deals with both co-location and substantial modification, two different parts of an P of, a, of a, an application of this type. The co-location on the tower or the antennas, or the tank in this case, are really handled through our building permitting process. So that is not part of the board's review. The board's review here is really related to the dimensional expansion on the ground that substantially changes the character of the site, in my opinion. Uh, therefore, the substantial modification under RSA 12K, I feel, is the purview of the board this evening. Okay. And I think that Mr. Hodder may disagree with me based on his... his, his I, I do, I am... No comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I'll take a no comment. That's all right. <laughs> Why don't we uh, have Jeffrey move? Madam Chairperson, members of the board, um, thank you. My name is Adam Braylard. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the applicant, uh, T-Mobile Northeast LLC. With me is, <coughs> excuse me, is Jeff Delacory. Jeff is uh, with Centerline Communications. He's a representative of the applicant's uh, uh, a, a agent for uh, site acquisition. So he finds the sites, works with the, the landlords, property owners, gets the deals done. Um, also with me is, is Ricky Karaoke. Ricky is part of uh, the, the applicant's radio frequency uh, department. So these guys have uh, some answers if you have questions to technical questions that you may have in connection with the application. So we're here uh, in connection with a site plan in front of the, the board um, to co-locate a uh, personal wireless service facility on the existing water tank located at 16 Manis um, Road. As the board knows, there are uh, three other carriers on that water tank, so we'd be the fourth. Um, our, our proposal is substantially similar to what is existing there with respect to the antenna on the, on the actual tank uh, and the cable tray, and, and I think what's, what's um, most germane to this board is the, uh, the cabinetry at the base of the tank. Um, the jurisdictional question has been, has been in front of the town, and we've worked with, um, with the director of planning for a few months now to kind of figure that out and, you know, I understand there may still be some questions. At the end of the day, I think what uh, the applicant's intent is, is to work with the board um, to understanding that there is uh, the SB 101 and 6409, but also the, the town zoning regulations. Um, and it's, it's the intent, like I said, work with the board, um, 
come up with a game plan with a site plan review, uh, obtain our, our variances from the uh, from the zoning board of adjustments, and, and, and move to building permit. So with that, I think I can go into the app, the uh, the proposal in terms of um, what's in front of the board, and I can talk about the antennas real quick, and I'll get a little bit more detail uh, what's going to be on the ground. So we're proposing to install. Uh, uh, four sets of, of two panel antennas each, so a total of eight panel antennas, very similar and like kind to what's existing uh, on the tank. We're also proposing to install eight um, RRUs or radio remote radio units or remote radio heads, again similar to what's on uh, the tank there as well. We're also going to pr propose to conceal our, our uh, conduit in our, in our coaxial uh, cabling in a cable tray that will be boxed in, very similar to what's there as well. Run that down the side of the uh, water tank to our uh, proposed equipment. All of that equipment on the uh, on the tank will be painted the identical uh, color of the uh, antennas that are there. The <coughs> the equipment cabinet or the the equipment um, platform that we're proposing within the compound. Um, is going to be located to the south south uh, south side of the of the tank, so directly to the south of the tank, and in, in, in between the tank and the fenced-in compound. So it will be located inside the fence compound, um, and directly uh, below the tank. It's different, or in, it's different than some of the other uh, uh, carriers' equipment that is. Uh, on the facility or inside the compound because this is a it's not a free uh, prefabricated shelter this is a kind of a exterior uh, cabinetry um, we're, we're reducing any impervious uh, surfaces by going with a, a raised grate and putting the uh, our cabinets on top of that grate so the grate area will be approximately six by twenty six feet by twenty feet um, and then we propose to put one uh, basically uh, computer cabinetry, which is really the radio cabinets that, that, um, that change the, the, the technology so that it goes from, from wireless to landline. And then we'll have two cabinets. Um, one will be a uh, battery backup, and the other will be a um, uh, RA, R, RAC and PPC cabinetry, so it's some more brains to the, to the equipment. Um, the, the, at the end of the day, the difference in, in the impervious surface from that is about uh, 33 square, square feet, so um, not substantial. My understanding is that based on the, um, our study, the, the facility is already, as a whole, that property is already, uh, has already exceeded its, its impervious, um, and so by extending that by 33 isn't, isn't significant. We'll, we'll get into that with the zoning board because that's one of our variances. Um, this, this facility does fall within the setback requirements, or this, these, these cabinets fall within the setback requirements um, of the regulations, and so we have uh, asked for that relief from the Zoning Board of Adjustments as well. That's generally our proposal. Thank you. Thank you. No, no waivers that you're requesting who? Um, no waivers. All right, uh, questions? Matt? I would just note kind of at the risk of, of expressing support for the application that the town has worked extensively with multiple parties on putting together this application simply because of the, the presence of the town's equipment within this enclosure and, and obviously the town's asset being the water tank, which is continues to be a form of redundancy for our water system. Uh, we've had several on-site meetings uh, with Dave Ford and Water Department staff, as well as the Electric Department. Uh, we've gone through two design iterations of where to place the cabinet. This was ultimately the best decision. And one of the sort of interesting things about this is that this is being placed on pads, and the reason for that is due to its proximity to the cemetery, which is just to the south of the site, and there are restrictions on excavation as a result. So this will be placed above grade, uh, and that's sort of an odd feature of this location, and it's very constrained square footage. Um, what's that? That's screened. Yes. Yep. There is significant vegetative screening on this side of the facility, obviously this being the side that's not directly exposed to school traffic uh, where this is proposed. 
Um, generally, I find the application complete. I did have some questions about uh, lighting, which I believe Adam may address in just a few moments, but I think those will be easily clarified. Um, and I find the application complete. I have, I have just a question about lot numbers. <laughs> yeah. Is this, are you using the old subdivision plan? I'm using the, the old packet, lot plan? The C1, for instance. Sheet C1. Yep. Just looks like there's a house and a lot with the same number as I, I gather the cemetery. And is this on the lot with the cemetery, on the lot with the house? This, the this is on its own lot. This is on its own small square lot that exists there. That's why the setback relief is necessary because the lot is very small in nature. And this lot next to it is a cemetery? Well, the, the cemetery is not an actual lot. It's just a, it exists on an existing lot of record. So there are Rooster property. Correct. So there are two lots with the number two four four zero six two zero zero zero. Let me get further information on that. Let me get back to you in one second here, Vaughn. I just I'm going to guess that there's a typo. Yeah, there may, and is that on, that's on the uh, Holden engineering plan, I assume? It's the plot plan C1 is what I'm looking at, but it's also on C2. Yeah, there is, in our tax data, it's sort of odd. The cemetery is shown as its own lot of record, but I don't believe it actually is. So for labeling purposes, you will get two labels, but it really is only one lot of record. That's my understanding. So it's on the same it's, lot It's a labeling house. error, yes. It's on the house yep. lot. Yep. The, the way I read it is that spot and the tax map number just reaffirms that it's part of the lot. Yeah, I, I think it's sourced from our tax map data, which is is confusing in the way that it's numbered. But I, I yeah, I, I believe the cemetery just simply exists on the lot of record and just be double labeled. It, is the water tower now at capacity? Is the number of antennas, or, or isn't that? An so that's that's been a critical question, and and I also wanted to mention that I believe I have authorization to speak on behalf of Dave Ford that he is comfortable with the proposal, um, and we've had significant discussion about the structural uh, integrity of the tank with the addition of this equipment. Um, You'll see that as part of my review, I have recommended that we just get a review of the structurals that were presented with the application, although we've already had some review, and clearly the summary indicates that we, we do believe the tank will withstand this additional equipment. Um, so Dave Ford is not concerned at this time. I guess I'll, I'll leave my answer that way. Okay. But it's certainly adding weight to the tank is a concern, especially when it's a town asset. Well, that's where I'm going to pick up. I was uh, uh, curious to know the uh, standoff brackets what, what, what do you do to uh, attach them? Do you have to actually drill the, ta the tank? It's going to be welds. It's stud welds, yep. Yep, yep. But there is some concern about the nature of those welds. It's not outright concern about it, but we, uh, we would, and you see in my review, I've suggested a pre-construction meeting to clearly understand how exactly those welds are going to be done, and we may potentially request that the welds be uh, looked at, but that will be ter determined during the building permitting process. But there's there's definitely concern about the manner in which these are being attached, but not total resistance to the approach. And, and uh, would would you like to comment on the lighting or have? have yeah, sure. The, the Cooper lighting is is a motion sensor lighting identical to what um, a, a residential uh, dwelling would have when you're walking up the driveway or uh, side door. Uh, so it would go on and off as a technician came in and then they could set it at a certain amount of time uh, to keep it on for when, uh, <clears throat> for when they are uh, on site. So it does have a, um, uh, it's dark sky compliant so that it won't shine up in the air or, or left and right, it'll stay right. It's, you know, it's uh, designed to flood right where it's supposed to, right on the uh, compound. And it's only on when service is happening. It's not on all night. That's right. Only it, it's motion censored, so it'll shut off when there's no, no motion. Correct. Okay. Then it uh, appears that the application is. is I, I have one other question. The um, the vegetated screen, which is there, the, that will be maintained into the future. Yep. I was there today, and it, we don't need to. Uh, remove any of the vegetation that's on. And, but but when the trees grow or the grow bigger or die off, they would get replaced. 
What, well, just, just quickly, quickly on that, that's on the abutting property. That vegetation is on the abutting property, so I want to be clear that the applicant is not in control of whether the trees die or do not. Okay. But th there is certainly vegetation there, but they can't, I don't believe they can be held to a condition that it be okay. replanted if uh, it become an issue. Okay. Any, anything else? Then um, uh, the application is, is complete. Now, somebody would, would make a motion to so that moved. effect. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, okay, then uh, I'll open the public hearing. If any member of the public wants to comment on, on this application, uh, now is the your opportunity to do that. Um, it's no, no one's interested okay. <laughs> in commenting. Uh, okay, um, planning board members, any other questions, comments? Uh, Just one comment, Madam Chairman. Um, issues that I would like to have raised regarding this application and prior applications to hang RFE antennae off of the water tower, which is in the same property and pretty adjacent to the high school, the middle school, and Crescent Lake School, um, I cannot raise because our state statutes forbid me to raise them. They're not germane to the discussion here. Um, environmental health issues cannot be raised. Um, our legislators, in their wisdom, decided that local boards and our federal legislators, in their wisdom, decided that local boards should have no input whatsoever on applications of this sort regarding health and safety of the members of the public near the antennae which are going to be continually broadcasting whatever it is they're broadcasting. Uh, we are all aware, I'm sure those of us who read the newspapers, of studies both in the United States and overseas that are of some concern regarding RFE, radio frequency emissions, particularly with, as they concern developing individuals, young children, um, our water tower where the antennas are hanging is right there by the school. That concerns me, but at this point I have to stop. I, I cannot raise these issues, although I have at least managed to get them somewhat in the record. Um, <clears throat> I think it's unfortunate that the wisdom that's shown by our legislators is oftentimes not as wise as that of the common man on the street. Thank you. Okay, did, did you want to make any other comments before? Go to Matt Sullivan. No, no comment. Okay. Okay. Sure, you don't want to comment on that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if if the board should wish to proceed, I've recommended a few conditions of approval. I'm going to add one to those that are in your your review. The first condition is the incorporation of the plans as amended to the date of this approval. And I've list, I've listed uh, plans one through sixteen here, including the two survey plans, also as plans of, of record. Uh, obviously, the applicant shall be responsible for the payment of all recording fees. That is condition number two. Uh, condition number three, the construction observation agreement. Um, this will really be on the, the actual construction side of things, but it's not really a site work related COA here. Uh, I am actually comfortable removing this condition if the board is comfortable. There really isn't site work necessary for this, and I prefer any review costs be uh, issued by the building permitting process. So I would recommend removing number three if you're comfortable. And condition number, new condition number three, no construction or site work for the amended site plan will be, may be undertaken until the pre-construction meeting with town staff. New condition number four, all the documentation in the application package will be uh, incorporated as part of the approval. And a new condition number five uh, essentially will read, this approval shall be conditional upon the ZBA action related to the granting of three variance requests and any condition imposed therein. Any modification to the proposed project shall be subject to further review and approval by the planning board. That would be condition number five. Okay. okay, thank you. How do we handle the concerns about the wells of the antennae hanging on them? So that, that will be addressed during the building permitting process. Uh, we still have to discuss with Dave Ford what security, whether it be financial or inspection related, he needs to feel comfortable with the welding that's going to go on. I had a conversation with him late last week about that very item. and. He'd like to, before he makes a decision on how exactly we protect ourselves, he'd like to have a meeting with the applicant to determine that. 
eliminating eliminating um, condition number three does not. No, we, we have the ability. No, we have the ability through our building permitting process. If we feel it necessary to have independent third party inspections, to have those inspections done. Okay. <clears throat> Are the uh, conditions indicated. Um, be willing to entertain a motion to uh, approve the. Uh, so moved. Motion has been made. Seconded. And seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, next application uh, Green Mountain Realty, LLC. Uh, this is for a site plan review at 38 uh, Filter Bed Road for a warehouse and an office building. Uh, tax map. 203-15, a case 2019-112. Uh, and basically, this is a non-conforming site that is being uh, brought into more conformance. And therefore, uh, the, our site plan review application uh, yeah, this is Yeah, this is a specific provision under 17543C, the non-conforming uses provision that allows for a change of a non-conforming use to a more conforming use subject to site plan review approval. Uh, I think everybody is familiar with the site absent the site visit that we, we did not do here. Um, and with that, I pass it off to the applicant, I guess, to address it. <laughs> Again, good evening. Randy Tatro for the applicant. Um, Norway Plains Associates is the surveyor and civil component of record on this application. Um, the, uh, the owner, Mr. Vic Druin, is there and his attorney, Christopher Bolt, just for reference. Um, <clears throat> so I'll start out by saying we uh, were contracted by the owner to do a retracement survey, site feature survey, uh, back in 2018, before the parcel was demoed, so that we could locate all the existing features, um, do a base plan for future planning. Parcel was surveyed, everybody knows where the parcel is, right? It's just to the west of um, the sewer treatment plant, uh, Paul Kimball's old sawmill property. Um, uh, so, Originally, back in 97, I believe, Don Volz, a Linden Design, did a survey on there for the Kimballs when they were redoing, filter, when the town was redoing Filter Bed Road in the late 90s. So, but since then, we've gone in 2018 and did a complete retracement boundary survey, located all the site features and so forth. Recently, we were uh, hired to do a site plan for this property under the site review regulations. Um, a little bit different insofar as the building, the existing build, the uh, new building was already there, um, but we do have all the information on what was there before. And what I'd like to do quickly is outline that information with the board with their permission as far as what was there existing, what was their existing um, coverage what was their existing building coverage versus what is being proposed. Okay. So with that, you can see the drawing. Um, hopefully you guys can see it pretty good. Uh, I, I made it as a presentation tool, but you can see the darker orange is the building that exists now. The lighter brown and orange that's underneath there is where the buildings were originally, the buildings that covered the site. Randy, you, you can take the mic with, with you. That probably would be. I know. <laughs> um, so the uh, this is what's being proposed. This is existing building, and this is a proposed future location pad. Um, and this was, and this was what was there originally. 
So just to quit, and if you want me to go back and forth, let me know and I can, I can go back and forth on that. But generally, that's what was covered back before this application. This is what's being proposed. And this kind of shows both. It's a little more busy, but I think you guys can get the idea. Um, so generally, um, generally the existing coverage buildings, gravel areas, pads, foundations, whatever, was 74%. The existing lot size, I think, I believe is 1.07 acres. So 74% of that comes out to, I think, about 34, five. Uh, th it's all on the stuff you got, it's, but I can go through it again. Um, the uh, former building, former or the coverage of the buildings was around 21.8%, about 22%. So what's being proposed that includes all of, which includes all of this area versus all of that area that was there originally. Like I mentioned, the existing, co the former coverage was 74%. Proposed coverage is 61%. The zoning coverage is 30%, just for a reference. In the residential zone, because this is a residential zone, the normal coverage, you know, if we've been through before on the zoning is 30%. The building coverage, former building coverage was 21.8, and the new building coverage would be 20. So it's close, but it's a, you know, um, and, and, and existing and proposed is a total of 20%. So this building in the proposed future, even though that's not what's being approved tonight, I just wanted to be able to show that it still was under the coverage. Is everybody clear on that? Um, so it amounts to about a decrease of about 1.82% in the, the former coverage and the proposed coverage. So that said, uh, you know, the lot is an acre in that zone. Um, it is, has the required frontage, so it's a conforming lot. It's just non-conforming by use. Uh, so in this particular case, water and sewer, it has town water, the town sewer can't be connected to, believe it or not, even though we're right next to the sewer, uh, because it's a high pressure main, it's big, and um, it's not something they can tap into with a small residential line. So we went through that during our multiple TRC meetings and talked with Dave about that. So we talked about that back in, uh, last year, and we, so we did a septic system design for a small 300 gallon per day septic which shows on the plans, it's all approved by the state. Um, that's located, well, you got it in your plans, but it's located right here, you can see it outlined. So because of the sewer connection issue, we've got a, a small commercial residential, uh, uh, commercial septic system approved. Um, I'll kind of paraphrase from the narrative that we wrote. Um, which is it's located at 38 Filter Bed Road, Green Mountain Realty, LLC is the owner of record. This, the application is for a uh, commercial warehouse and a small office area as shown on the plans, outlined on the plans. Um, is the only use being proposed for this. And the parcel obviously is located next door to the treatment plant and it's in the manufactured housing overlay district. The original uh, parcel had three main structures that we use for warehousing, mechanics operations, chipping, and sawmill. Uh, the prior structures were in, you know, fair to poor condition and the remainder of the site was covered with the gravel as you've seen and uh, junk and concrete pads and so forth. Um, uh, so there wasn't any real landscaping, non the, the landscaping was non-existent. But there is, what was left was an existing strip, vegetative strip along the side, which is the only side that borders 
you know, a, a resident, uh, residential use. And that, that will be a discussion for later. Um, so the prior structures did not adhere to the setbacks in some instances. Um, this, it was pretty much the same entrance. As you can see on this plan, it just was a little bit bigger. And what you'll also notice on this plan is you can see the original footprint of the, of the original building. This was discussed originally when the building permit was discussed. So we pulled it in to meet the setback and the, you know, the drip edge and the setback on this side. We pulled it in about nine feet at the farthest point. Um, and, and you can see how that looks under there. So um, the rest of the setbacks are as shown. So the rest of the buildings were inside that. I'll go back to the front sheet. So that, that gives you a basic idea of before what's being proposed. Um, so filter bed roads, Class 5 Town Road, the entrance is gonna stay the same. There were some discussions at the TRC level with Dave regarding the grading and the crowning of that road for drainage purposes. We'll now continue on with the drainage if you want me to. Um, so that was, um, there was some questions at the last TRC regarding that and we provided Dave with a grading plan that assures that no water will go out onto filter bed road and that this is crowned and taking appropriate steps for that. Um, let's see, the, uh, Uh, we've gone over the utilities. There's underground electric and there's uh, underground power in the front of the building as shown on the plans. Uh, comes up in, let's get, that's just the existing features plan. When we first went there, and that's the existing survey feature plan that shows what was there in 2018 before any demo occurred on the site. So the utilities are shown running in on this side and they connect to the building up in that area. And what's, and what's being proposed is a paved area located as shown right here to the immediate use of this building. Um, we've done the ADA handicap meets that. We've got the parking spaces. You can look on the criteria. I believe it's a certain amount for a certain amount of square footage for the building. It's a 60 by 80 building. Um, and then there was additional space for the office component. So I think we require, I believe it or not, only required three spaces and I think we got six plus the handicap. If you look at the parking requirements. Any questions there? Okay. Um, and as far as just generally, just generally as far as the drainage goes, again, if we were starting on a blank sheet and we were starting with no nonconformity, stuff like that, um, the, the, uh, the drainage um, threshold would be a little different as far as, um, you know, uh, the drainage requirements in the site review regulations. In this particular case, what we're trying to do is trying to make it less of a problem than it already was. And in this particular case, for people who know the area, and Dave Ford, we had discussions with Dave about this, the drainage going up to the uh, cell tower site comes down through like this, and it comes down this way right now. Even though this, we're doing less coverage and so forth as far as the impervious goes, what we tried to do is get a, a, a level spread of swale in here in a small detention area to try to slow this down and pick up some of it and still let it trickle out where it's going down to this catch basin and eventually down to the wetland and behind where um, Mr. Devila had his place and it goes down to the main bay. So um, there's some photos in that I think were in the packet that shows an overall Shows, that shows an overall view so you can kind of see 
where the drainage comes down, goes across the road, goes back into this wetland complex and ends up towards Back Bay. So we, in discussions with Dave Ford on that, we were pretty, we felt pretty good about what we were doing because there's not much drainage that's left going this way. The majority of it comes this way and the little bit of sheet runoff, the little bit of sheet runoff that we have for the driveway is not the majority and should be able to be serviced by the existing catch basin and the existing culverts. Dave had a question about the culvert, whether it was plastic, and one of the first um, DRC meetings. It is, it's in good shape, it's 15 inch, so there's no issue with the capacity in that area. So that's the basic drainage. Existing drainage comes splits in this area, and this is gonna go this way, and this is gonna stay in the swale that's in this wooded vegetated area between the between this and the residence, and it goes out to this culvert currently. The rest of this will sheet off. You can see the drainage patterns. You guys are used to that now. And it kind of goes this way, and this one will go into this catch basin. These catch basins are not uh, connected as we originally thought when we did it in the winter. We had to go back and reinvestigate that. And they're actually separate. This comes down and goes this way. It's a little bit of flat drainage that gets into this off a of filter bed, and then anything that will sheet off of here will go across this culvert and go in the direction it's going now. So that's the general um, drainage patterns. We've got drip edge around the building. It's, as far as um, stormwater management, um, and again, the site is now just graveled in this area. This is what's being proposed to be paved. There's been some discussion with Matt on time frame for that kind of stuff. Um, there was a question in Matt's plan of review that we got, I think, on Monday. And uh, you give, it, me a, you give me a hard time there. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, it had to do with the parking spaces. We were before the board with uh, accidents. <coughs> It's karma, it's karma, Randy, right yeah, there. No. <laughs> the spaces that we showed were uh, um, <clears throat> 9 by 18, and it was supposed to be 9 by 19. So what we had to do <clears throat> was we had to move it about a foot closer to the building so that we made sure that we could keep mm. this width mm. 24 that feet as we've shown. What? Everybody kind of understand that? Sorry about that. Uh, so that was one of the things that came up in the plan of review. <clears throat> and we'll get to the last one after I take whatever questions you guys have. That would um, be a good idea. Would be a good as far idea. as the application goes. Again, the, 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 uh, the component that we were tasked with was to try to provide <clears throat> a grading and drainage plan and a, a proposed site plan for the, this existing use. Easy, easy question for you. On the, uh, on the le left-hand side of the property, you said there's a swale going down between Stockade Fence, which is the neighbor's line right there. So Residence's driveway, and you can see, you can kind of see where that starts and goes up through like that. That's that where that area is, and this is actually a view from before this got tore down. And you can see that you know this was raised, and it's a little bit of a swale that runs down through there, which would be located. Is there volume there? Huh? Is there volume there? It's mostly just heat runoff. It's not really a, it doesn't get really defined until a little bit down in this area right by the way. And again, the bushes are just the alders and stuff up in here. So uh, that's really all there is for us. Mm -hmm. I can see it on here as well. Yeah. Um, 
so you can see it. So it's just a general, it's a general swale that goes out to that culvert. Said, John? Yes, thank you. Okay, Any, anything else right now, or do you want to hear from Matt? Yeah, just a, just a few brief comments. I mean, obviously, this is a, a, a challenging site in the sense that the existing nonconformity of it stretches beyond just the use, but also the drainage, the, you know, all, really all of the site features that existed before. Um, I've tried to sort of tailor my review the best way possible to recommend how it conforms with the site plan review regulations, recognizing that much of this is an improvement, but not full conformance with those regulations. I think uh, the board will understand that. Uh, I did note some, a few potential questions. Parking has been addressed, no issue there. Uh, just a simple plan amendment I think that's necessary. The buffering again is sort of odd in this case. Our buffering requires a certain level between residential and commercial uses, but again, I think that based on the improvement, there's it's it's an improvement to the lot and strict conformance with the standards. That was one question I had. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it, it seems for non-conforming, and they're making it more conforming by adding some buffering. In my opinion, it's compliant. I just wanted to make it clear to the board what the standards are. But yeah, it is. It, it's something that our ordinance doesn't clearly, or our regulations don't clearly contemplate that maybe they should that if you're improving something, bring it closer into conformity, I think that's, I think that's something the board s supports within their regulations. Um, Randy addressed drainage, uh, erosion control, utilities, lighting, all of those have been provided. Um, and I, I really have no additional comments. I haven't recommended security for this project. There's no signage proposed for the project. And I feel that it is compliant and does represent a complete application to the board. Okay. Uh Randy, the, the uh, structure is for st uh, storage and office use. Do, do you know what kind of storage? Yeah. That well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to change the battery in just a second. One moment. Uh, but it is internal storage, correct? It's internal storage with trash cans inside. Okay. 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 What's my water cell at all? Free survey, yes. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, so there's no dumpster that like is normally proposed or screening or anything because they don't, they don't propose to generate that kind of waste. So we don't show that on there. Okay. It's just going to be internal, uh, you know, trash cans that they're going to take to the dump. So uh, that's what's being proposed there. Any other questions? Uh, okay, uh, this application is complete. No waivers have been uh, requested or needed. That's correct, right, Matt? Yep. In the interest of increasing conformity, I don't believe that any waivers are necessary for it. Okay. And so I'd entertain a motion to accept this application as complete. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Seconded. It's been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, thank you, Randy. Uh, okay. I'll open the uh, public hearing now. If anyone wants to comment on, on this application, now is the time for you to do that. Ask any questions uh, that you might have. Okay, everyone's all set. Okay. Uh, 
I'll just, re yeah, I'll recommend a few conditions should the board wish to proceed. Uh, condition number one, incorporation of the, of the plan set, including the seven plans presented with the application. Um, and that includes the driveway profile plan. I did include that in the board's packet that was provided to Dave Ford. Uh, number two, the applicant shall be responsible for payment of all recording fees. Uh, all final plan is to be stamped and signed and dated by a licensed land surveyor and uh, professional engineer. All the documentation submitted is incorporated as part of the approval. Uh, approval to all federal, state, and local permits, including potentially a, a Town of Wolfboro driveway permit, depending on Dave Ford's preference here and the fact that the driveway really isn't being substantially uh, reconstructed. Uh, plan set and plan now sh notes shall be amended to include the standard parking space dimension of 9 by 19. I passed along a detail of the amendment that has been made to the plan, and we just need to get a final version of that. Uh, obviously, the proposed future building site and paving are not incorporated as part of the approval and would require further review by the planning board. Uh, installation of all erosion control and inspection by town, if any, is, is put into place, but I think we're already past that point here. So I would actually recommend removal of condition number eight. New condition number eight, uh, final letter of compliance with ADA to be submitted by the applicant. Uh, condition number shown as 10, but really condition number nine here. I had put a timeline on the paving and striping, but due to some environmental issues that we recognize the applicant is still working through, the, the intention of this was to ensure that the improvements are made in accordance with the plans, but the 60-day timeline may not be feasible for the applicant as I understand it, so I would recommend removal of this unless the planning board is is interested in uh, potentially speaking to the applicant directly about what the timeline might be. What did you hope to accomplish by number 10? Simply ensuring that the paving and ADA spaces were clearly marked and completed, but I, I don't think it's necessary um, based on the stage of the project that the applicant is currently at. That's an unusual condition. I haven't seen that before. The, the only, I've recommended it on a few situations where ADA access needed to be marked clearly, uh, but I, I agree that it is unusual I've included here, and that's why I've recommended removing it. I think it is uh, not necessary in this case. It's a good idea to remove it. So those would be conditions one through eight, then. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Well, it, it seems that, uh, to me that this application uh, certainly fits the uh, making a non-conforming use less non-conforming. The setbacks are now seem to be complying. Buffering has been provided. Uh, parking coverage has, has been reduced. And uh, it seems uh, that the uh, use that's being proposed is uh, less intrusive in the, uh, this is a residential neighborhood. Yeah and uh, this would be uh, not as much adverse impact, I would think, on, on this neighborhood. Plus, I think the applicant has done a really great job of cleaning up a site that was quite an eyesore. Uh, so I would I'd also suggest that the drainage from the hill above um, probably was not well taken care of in the previous site, and now there seem to be plans to make that a better situation. Right, thank, thank you. So I'd, uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, agree with Peter on that drainage at the top side. Uh, I know that when we did the facilities master plan chapter, we looked at that area uh, on that side and said it would be a good area to have stormwater management from the town side. It's encouraging to see it come from the neighbor's side first and maybe the town will uh, step up and they will put one in on their side also. Okay, well, I'll entertain a, a motion uh, to approve this application with uh, conditions indicated. So moved. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, great. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, folks, for coming. Next time I'll bring water. Uh, <laughs> or a less lengthy application. Okay, the um, uh, next item on the agenda is uh, opportunity for public comments. <coughs> the member of the public wants to uh, comment on any issue. They're all running no, away from no the, is the uh, time to do that. Uh, we'll go on to action items. A, we have a lot merger. Uh, Alice Stedman, 
1989 trust uh, tax map 134-3 and 133-20 this is at 139 Governor Wentworth. Oh, this is road. Brief, brief review, kind of an interesting situation with Roby's RV park here and a vacant lot both owned in common. Um, one of the challenges here that I saw is that obviously Roby's RV park also has condoized ownership within it, but the underlying lot of record is in fact owned in common with that adjacent lot. So despite the interesting situation, um, I see no issue that would prevent the lot from merger. I did, and I actually did, in this case, con contact the trustee, which is a, an attorney with Pierce Atwood, to just confirm some details, and I was comfortable with uh, what she told me. And, and Matt, this, yep. is, this middle line is going to be eliminated. The, so the lot? This, this lot line. That, this large lot is the RV park, yep. and this small lot is vacant with nothing on it right now. So. Okay. And it doesn't, and, and you know, one concern I had was, you know, by right expansion that would be created by this, it's, it's, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't increase the ability uh, to exacerbate any nonconformity. Anything would be subject to site plan review. You know, that, that's not an issue as a result of this merger. Do we know the history of these Lots the way this was is, is, is it owned by the yeah John I'm oh, sorry I don't know um, d is there something someone specific you're wondering about or uh, I'm just wondering why it wasn't done earlier I, that's th I had the same question when I looked at it I, I don't I don't know maybe they were in different own let me check real quick actually just so I can get you an answer on that this abuts the town parcel here up at the head so this abuts. Give me one moment. Let me, just, let me just pull it up on the tax maps. Do, 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 do. It, it, it looks like there's uh, soil in that area. I'm wondering if there's uh, another house, a dwelling. There's nothing on that. The, the, I see a house yep. out by the blue. I see a, another building down way at the point, and so. so John, John the, the, the building that you see pretty clearly there, that's a house. The other things that you see are RVs that are parked there, because this is Roby's RV park. So I don't believe there are any other houses out there, just the one house that the, the owner uses, from what, I, from what I understand, unless somebody has a better knowledge of what's in there. And this isn't expanding and non-conforming. No, because the, the the merger doesn't, by nature, expand the use at all, and it doesn't. The ability to. It it setbacks are the only issue here, right? So they could they do have more space in which to develop, but you know the basis of measurement for non-conforming use is the extent of the use, not the size of the lot. So they don't gain any ability to expand here. Okay. Right. Not to have more room for more RVs. Well, it's a non-conforming use already, so yeah, I don't, I don't think, yeah, no, it's, it's no, yeah, it's, it, I don't believe it expand. It gives them the ability through this action to actually expand it. I think they'd have to go back to the ZBA sure. and the planning board for for further review. But in, in technical terms, the setback yep. isn't the 20 feet anymore. It's now moved over. Moved over because yep. they can build to that line yep. because they own the other side. Yep, that's exactly right. So the setbacks are the one thing that changed with this. Um, they could technically build over to that new line, but other than that, there, there isn't a significant change. Mm -hmm. And I don't, Yvonne, you said the town parcel? Yeah, it's this number 18 up here, the little tiny piece that the town owns at the head of that brook. Oh, that's yeah. the Melanson. Oh, yes. Yes, that is town of Yep. <clears throat> All right. Some of the secret land that the town has. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And John, I don't see any other owners in it in the last couple of years, at least. But there may be some going back, going back away. I'm sure it got into a trust somehow. So, yeah. Okay. So, move to approve. Seconded. Mm -hmm. 
Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, CIP appointments. Just a, the Board of Selectmen have recommended Paul O'Brien as their representative for the Board of Selectmen. So in the okay. in, last year, you, your protocol was to basically formally appoint him after their recommendation. Okay. All right, then I'll make a motion to appoint Paul O'Brien as the Board of Selectmen's representative to uh, CIP. Seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, okay. You vote and uh, we're going to be uh, Matt and I. I'm going to try to get you to make some free coffee for this year. Matt and I are going to be talking to another um, citizen member. Yeah, we have a meeting with the gentleman who reached out to us and is recently re re slowing down in work and has some interest. And I've actually met this individual on other projects. Uh, seems to be very savvy, maybe a financial brain that might be good for CIP process. But that would be a, we have the two citizen at large seats open right now. So meeting with him next week and we'll, if he's interested, we'll bring him back to you to, to appoint him formally to the committee. So. Okay, and we still need a planning board. One. Well, oh, you're on. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that, okay. I mean, I just did we appoint you already? No. I don't believe we did. Yeah. I, I move that we reappoint Kathy Bernard as our CIP seconded. representative. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, but we still do need one yes. more member. <laughs> it's fun. Right, Mike? It's, it's fun. Just a, it's fun <laughs> in a torture kind of way? No, no, actually it's, a, it's an important job. And it is, it is really. A good right. job, and somebody from the planning board other than me can step up and do it. For <laughs> not you. <laughs> not me, as I said. Okay, well, uh, our, all right, let's see. We st and we still got time. I mean, so it, we're yeah. going to get into it soon, but. Don't you do it. Probably excitement will mount as we get closer to the time. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll guilt somebody. I'm looking at John. No. <laughs> um, okay, the New Hampshire DOT letter. Just an informational letter. You, you see in there that they request a list of mitigation actions. Dave Ford is handling those mitigation actions on behalf of the town, but it was addressed to the board, so I just wanted to make sure you're aware of mm. this project. Okay. All right. Um, planning board minutes from April 16th. Any issues? Motion to approve. Thank you. Anybody want to second? Sec and motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, and anyone against the motion and one abstention? I beg your pardon, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Yeah, no. I no. oftentimes jump the gun. No, no, oh, no that, that's okay. Okay. Um, there was a TRC meeting that I didn't attend because I wasn't here. Yeah. Uh, and the um, on the agenda is the booster master plan. Yes. Could you just tell us, I mean, are we going to see a master plan? For so, yeah, we had, a, we had a really positive meeting with Brewster Academy, uh, their team that's working on their master plan, their campus master plan, um, with the TRC members, kind of the department heads, to, to talk about what they were thinking for their site. It is big, 100-year stuff. I mean, it's pretty, pretty shocking what they're kind of looking at doing. Um, that visit to the TRC was sort of dipping the toe in the water of getting it out to the public. They've just finalized it now, um, and we've recommended to them that they do come to the planning board at some time, and I believe they will, uh, and talk to you about that master plan as part of a work session meeting to, to sort of see how it fits with planning board's comprehensive plan. Uh, spoiler alert, it fits really well with a lot of what we're it fits really well with a lot of what we're talking about, particularly along the Route 28 corridor with the project in 2024, which is great. But there are a lot of big ideas that I think they want to share with you. It's pretty, pretty visionary stuff. Um, so they do plan to come to the planning board. Um, I'm sensitive to the fact that I know that the Board of Selectmen probably want to know what's going on as well. 
Uh, but because it's really a planning document, my advice to Brewster has been to come here first. Um, and I know that there may be some resistance to that, but they may do them simultaneously. I'm not really sure. That's ultimately up to them. But I think it's important based on particularly how the dorm project was done and any pot potential future projects that you folks understand how it fits in with their bigger you know, project priority list and vision. So I think coming here is really, really important. They, uh, I, I did attend that they were also at a previous TRC meeting yep. and we asked them to reach out to the neighbors. Yes, so they, they will be coming forward with an application soon. Um, no, have they reached out to the neighbors about the... I can't confirm that they have or, or have not. I, I don't believe that they have. I know that they wanted to have the meeting with staff last week that they had before doing so. I would expect that they've made contact by this time, but uh, they wanted to make sure that the town understood their long-term plan before they did that, Kathy. Even though that project was very specific in nature, they were talking about, they wanted to make sure that we were, we understood their plan before they did okay, that. Okay, so the application uh, is coming in June? Then? We do not know. We do not know. Not, not the master plan. But I, I, I don't know because I, I anticipated that it would, um, but I, it, there may potentially be a delay. Okay. So we just, we just don't know at this time, so. Okay, um, and that application is for a the, main, the new maintenance facility. The TRC is a public meeting. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and so it's for a new maintenance facility that will be on the opposite side of the street. Yep. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting application, and ne next to uh, Dr. Neal's property, going to a yep. hospital on that particular. Yep. And, property that's owned by Brewster. And that's why we thought it was critical to, get, to look at the master plan because at first, you know, at first you might say, why are they moving their maintenance facility across the street out of the campus? But when you look at what they're trying to do on the other side, on the lake side, it really does seem to make some sense. So that's why we want you all to be aware of, you know, how it fits into their larger plan because it's not, you know, it's not, this is part of something bigger, I guess, so. I think I hope that they come to you before that application actually is submitted and talk about the bigger plan. But I don't know that will definitely happen. I would encourage them to. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Make their job easier. Also, again, and I mentioned it, this at TRC, I would really encourage them to come to us first with the master plan. I think that's our job. Uh, we're the ones that are then going to have to look in individually at all of these projects. Yeah. And uh, that's just the proper course to, to take, in my mind. And they've been advised of that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, that that's. But it, it, yeah, not to end it on kind of a fuzzy note, but really kind of positive because this is a you know just a, a sign that we are improving our relationship. I think with Brewster a little bit, um, which is is you know generally positive for the community. I think uh, they were comfortable sitting down to have this session with us where. You know, I'm not saying they wouldn't have done that before, but I think that this was a really good sign that they want to work with us and make sure that we're kind of moving in the same direction. And, you know, just sort of continuing on what we did through the Route 28 study where they were very involved. We'd like to continue for them to be involved with what we're doing. Well, I think they, they used to involve yeah. probably the members. I mean, they, the yeah. previous master plan they brought. brought okay, good. Then great, we're right on line. With I think that's perfect. Things go a lot smoother. Anything else? Nope. Okay. okay. Move to adjourn. All right. Second. Oh, oh no, 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 just one other. I mean, are we? Doing I know what you're going to ask. I know what you're going to ask, and I. So we may see. I, I I don't think it's I don't think it's ready, but that's. You don't think the man. I don't think it's quite ready, Kathy. I'm sorry. Oh. knew you were going to ask me tonight, but I really don't think that we're quite ready for public yeah, I wasn't trying to put you on the No, no, because I, I want to get it to you, but I, I really think that we need a little more time to just okay, format it. Uh, yeah. Uh, fine. Do you think we can do it in June? I think we can definitely do it in June. Okay, okay. I'm Good. confident in that. Okay, sorry, folks. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank, thank you, everybody. Well, Bye. Bye. Thank you, John. Are you not? I'll take it. 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 I
good to see. Yeah. I think uh, 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 they can submit another.